Welcome back. This is Aza News, and here is the news for today's episode. Bougainvilleans head to the polls to elect new president. The people of Bougainville began voting in a general and presidential election after the South Pacific Island nation overwhelmingly voted to be independent from Papua New Guinea in 2019. The election is the first since the independence referendum and the winner will preside over negotiations on the terms of separation. Almost 98% of the 181,000 votes cast in the referendum that is part of a peace pact struck in the aftermath of the decade-long war between Bougainville's rebel fighters and Papua New Guinea's forces, which ended in 1998. Bougainville's 250,000 strong population has a median age of just 20, a demographic that is likely bad news for the ex-combatants, 25 candidates eyeing for the top political office. The fighting are triggers by dispute run at the time by a forerunner of giant miner Rio Tinto, set off by anger over land royalties and rivers polluted by mining. As many as 20,000 died during the fighting between the region's rebel guerrilla army and Papua New Guinea forces and PNG forces and Panguna was closed. Last year's non-binding independence pool was part of the peace process that ended the conflict. Bougainville boasts large deposit of gold and copper that the government wants to develop to finance its independence. Pooling is likely to be complicated by the first recorded case of COVID-19 in Bougainville, a 30-year-old man who returns from Port Moresby. The Canadian preacher jails in Myanmar held services during virus ban. A Myanmar court sentences a Canadian preacher who says Christians are immune to the novel coronavirus to jail with hard labor for three months for holding church services in defiance of a ban on gatherings during the outbreak. Today, White Tun and David La were sentenced to three months hard labor under Article 30 due to their failure to follow the local administrative rules of natural disaster management. The preliminary period of detention can be deducted from the sentences. David La, a Canadian of Burma's origin with another man, Myanmar National White Tun, are detained under the disaster management law over services they held in the city of Yangon. Ong Ki Win, the lawyer for both men, confirms that both of them are jailed for three months. An official says at the time, about 20 people take part in La gatherings and La tested positive for coronavirus. Religious gatherings across the world have at times been triggers for the spread of the coronavirus. Myanmar reports 357 cases and 6 deaths related to the virus. Chinese mainland reports 25 new confirmed COVID-19 cases. Chinese health authority says that they are receiving reports of 25 new confirmed COVID-19 cases, including 60 import cases and 9 locally transmits. No deaths relate to the disease. Report in Shanghai Municipality that all the nine locally transmitted cases which imported outside of the mainland. The Commission says a total of 58 COVID-19 patients are discharged from hospital after recovery. And there were still three suspect COVID-19 cases, 288 asymptomatic cases, including 141 import ones, are still under medical observation. A total of more than 3,000 COVID-19 patients in the Hong Kong SAR, 46 in the Macau SAR, and 443 in Taiwan are discharges from the hospital after recovery. Former Japanese Prime Minister Yoshiro Mori met with Taiwan President Tsai Ing-wen to pay his respects to leader Li Teng-hui. Accompanied by a group of Japanese lawmakers, Mori conveys Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe's condolence in a meeting with the current Prime Minister Tsang Ing-wen and expressed gratitude for what Li had done for Japan. Thank you for former Prime Minister Mori. I know you were a warm-hearted person. Back in those days, it was because of former Prime Minister Mori's efforts that former President Lee was able to visit Japan after leaving office. I want to thank the three of my good friends that I meet often, Keiji Furuya, Nobuo Kishi, and Seishiro Eto, as well as the honored guests in this room for their long-standing support and contribution to Taiwan and Japan relations. The people of Taiwan feel it deeply. Former Japan's Prime Minister, Mori, says Mr. Lee had a better understanding of Japan and Japanese history even than the Japanese people. Uh, 
Mr. Lee had a better understanding of Japan and Japanese history, even than the Japanese people. We are truly grateful for having received a lot of guidance from him. Lee Teng Hui, who became Taiwan's first democratically elected president in March 1996, died on July 30th at the age of 97. Lee is known as a pro-Japanese political figure. Lee was born and raised in Taiwan, which was under Japanese colonial rule. He was a fluent Japanese speaker and briefly served in the Imperial Japanese Army, staying on after its World War II, surrender in 1945 to study at the University of Kyoto. Indonesia prepares for human trials to develop coronavirus vaccine. The pharmaceutical company Sinovac Clinical Human Trials for the potential vaccine are set to begin in coronavirus-stricken Indonesia as state-run pharmaceutical firm Biopharma prepares to enter the third phase of its collaboration with China. According to the website of the West Java government, the researchers from the Bandung University in province of West Java will involve about 1,600 volunteers aged between 18 and 59. The human trial comes as Indonesia has struggled to contain the spread of the novel coronavirus. The global pandemic are spark and scramble to create a vaccine with more than 100 in development and about a dozen already being tested on humans. Japan expresses great concern over Hong Kong situation. The government's top spokesman, Yoshihide Suga, says Japan continues to have great concern over Hong Kong arrests under a new national security law. We are aware of the situation, as you pointed out, and Japan continues to have a great concern on the Hong Kong situations. Hong Kong police arrest 10 people, including other Apple Daily tabloid owner Jimmy Lee Agnes Cho, 23, one of the former leaders of young activist Joshua Wong's Demosisto groups, which disbands before the new law came into force. Suga said Japan has consistently stressed the need for Hong Kong to maintain its free and open system and develop in a stable, democratic manner under the one country, two systems framework. Although Suga didn't elaborate on detail, Japan will respond properly while working with related countries. Malaysia implements QR codes to help track and to stop a virus spread. The technology of scanning a QR code to show one's health status is being widely used in Malaysia as a crucial to fight the spread of COVID-19. The pandemic has made the humble of QR code a part of daily life in countries such as Malaysia, Singapore and Thailand. The data will be more accurate uh, in terms of uh, collecting the data. Um, government tracking will be much uh, easier comparing to writing on books. Everyone entering shopping malls, most shops and restaurants have to scan a code and then enter their personal details. This enables the authorities to swiftly trace and notify anyone who may have come into contact with someone with COVID-19. However, there are concerns about the trade-off between public safety and privacy, but most Malaysian consumers are embraced to the technology. Still, this new widespread of the use of the QR codes is already spurring a big jump in the use of contactless e-wallet systems in Malaysia. We are forced into that using the QR code, so I think it's a, it's a good introductory uh, move. There will be some easier acceptance towards uh, using more digital mode of uh, transactions. Analyst says the daily use of these technologies will also open up opportunities for app developers and service providers. Singapore police try out drones that developed by Israel to check social distancing from the sky. Singapore's police test two pilotless drones developed by Israel's aerobotics to help enforce social distancing measures aimed at containing the spread of COVID-19. According to aerobotics, the three-and-a-half-month trial over an industrial state in the west of the city is the first time automated commercial drones approved to fly over a major metropolis. This is the first uh, drone that's completely automated, uh, so that means it can fly with no operator. Um, the idea is to use it for uh, multiple applications, including uh, mapping, uh, surveillance, uh, security, and others. It's very helpful to have a tool that's there when you need it on demand within a couple of seconds, and that provides the three-dimensional um, aspect or view of what you're looking at. So I think it helps them a lot, not only with uh, emergency response applications, but also with normal operations. So uh, if a police officer needs to get somewhere and you can send the drone instead, obviously that's very helpful to them. The company say the drone can pinpoint locations and zoom into areas that might not be visible to police officers on foot or in vehicle. 
We're talking to multiple governments. Uh, I have to say that the Singaporean government is exceptionally innovative and progressive when it comes to adopting technologies and implementing them uh, quickly. I was uh, extremely surprised by their interest and how quickly they pushed forward the technology. Uh, but we are in uh, discussions with additional uh, cities to deploy the same technology there as well. Singapore government's Home Team Science and Technology Agency says it had trialed the drones with police. Predominantly, since we believe that uh, the system can really save lives, uh, there are several applications that can relate to that. The simplest one is, you know, if there is a fire somewhere uh, in the city and the drone would usually get there quicker than the fire truck. And being able to transmit video of the fire of the location to the fire truck before it even gets there uh, could really save lives. And that applies to additional emergency response applications. So we think and we believe that this technology uh, will become common in every city around the world. Aerobotics are rising $120 million in funding, has invested $100 million to develop the drones, and the social distancing aspect of the trial was still ongoing. Crow says Aerobotics is in talks with other cities to deploy the drones. Three New Zealanders die in South Korea landslide. Three New Zealanders from the same family are finding death in South Korea after landslide hit vacation cottages in Gapyong country, northeast of Seoul. A Gapyong police official says the victims are women believed to be 65, her 36-year-old daughter and her 3-year-old grandson. The New Zealand Foreign Ministry says it is aware of the deaths and providing consular assistance. Authority says a total of 14 people are killed, more than 1,000 people forced from their homes as 42 consecutive days of rain of the trigger floats and landslides. Heavy rain which also battered China, Thailand, Myanmar and India, inundated farmland and flooded parts of major highways and bridges in the capitals. Vietnam's Vinh Group mass produced ventilators amid virus outbreak. Vietnam's largest conglomerate Vin Group step up the production of ventilators as the country is hit with the new COVID-19 outbreaks. Vin Group says it is successfully producing ventilators, cooperating with the Massachusetts Institute of Technology and U.S. company Medtronic. They have capability to make 55,000 units a month. They sent 1,000 units to Da Nang, a tourism hotspot where Vietnam's first domestically transmit case in 100 days. The Southeast Asian country of 96 million has confirmed at least 642 infections with six deaths. So far, Vin Group also committed to donate 2,400 ventilators to Russia and Ukraine with 800 exports. And that's all for today. We'll see you again.